how would you feel if I told you that in 2016, an up and coming peach you made was defeating top players in his home state of Ohio, but it turned out that everything was a lie. In 2014, a young player had joined the Smash scene. Since Pichu was ranked the third worst character in Melee the year prior, there was something inside him that wanted to take Pichu to the next level. He felt as if Pichu had potential to be far greater than what people think. This player would start his journey as a regular tournament attendee, doing practice routines and even making discussion boards on analyzing top players like Hungrybox. At first, everything seemed fine. He was a Pichu main that had to take the time above and beyond to get the wanted results. Over time, he'd improve, but on several occasions, there'd be suspicions that something was off. He'd begin to beat top players in Ohio more often than usual at a relatively fast rate, only taking two years to start taking sets off players like Sweet, Dempt, and even having close sets with S1 and 4%, who was top 100 in the world at the time. Normally, it's more common to see this when a player uses a high tier character. All was going well until one day, it was discovered that he had been cheating by modding his Wii and by inputting a specific button combination, his Pichu would go from low tier to absolutely broken. Today, we'll be talking about the story and the drama, The Night of the Living Pichu. This is the story of Pichugate, aka Super Pichu. In 2014, Chaos was a new player that wanted to climb up the ranks in the Midwest and in the world. All with Pichu. He felt as if the character had potential to see far better results since not many players use Pichu at a serious level. He was a young kid, being around 13 years old when he first joined the scene. With high ambitions, he set out to be the best Pichu player in the world, looking to cement his legacy. In the beginning of his Smash career, Chaos, and like many newcomers, would attend his local tournaments and not have much success in the beginning. And as you can see, Chaos was rightfully seated low in his first couple years as a Pichu main, meaning that he wasn't a major threat to the majority of players, especially if he were a ranked player. See, maining Pichu or any low tier character takes years of hard work and dedication. The reason Pichu is a low tier is because he tends to die early due to being the lightest in the game having really bad range, coupled with the fact that he takes self damage by doing special attacks, forward throws, and forward ears. He was intended to be a joke character said by Sakurai himself. Even with all these weaknesses, Chaos wanted to take Pichu to the next level. He was dedicated to learning the ins and outs of Melee itself, by recording his own tournament games, and even making a Smash Boards post detailing Hbox's movements in the form of a heat map, that showed where Hbox would position himself in high level matches. By trying to implement techniques the top players use, Chaos would set himself out and travel across the region taking losses and gaining experiences along the way, which helped in improving his fundamentals and his overall game. Eventually, he'd start to slowly climb up the ranks, beating players who he often lose to and with the amount of work that he put in, the results started showing slowly but surely. June 26, 2016, ARG2, the second iteration of the Ohio Monthly Series was on the way. With the tournament having players such as Joey Krizzle, Surf Sub Hail Satan, Chaos himself being present and being regulated to the 10th seed, and even 4%, a Jigglypuff player in the top 100 of the world looking to take the tournament win. At melee tournaments, it's a common occurrence that the players are the ones who tend to bring the game setups in order for tournaments to run as smoothly as possible, and one of those players who brought a setup was Chaos himself. The tournament begins and Chaos goes up against Remix, a fox meme from the same region. After a bit of back and forth arguing on whether to play on Chaos's very own setup or a different setup in the venue, in the end, they decide to play on Chaos's Wii setup. They both sit down, pick their mains, and the game begins. When the game starts, Remix feels as if he can't do anything. He tries approaching, and some moves just outright beat his attacks. So then, he changes his style. Remix now begins to laser camp, and they go back and forth in stocks.
With a 2-1 loss in round 1 of the winner's bracket, he'll need to step up his game big time since he is now in the loser's bracket, which means he's at a huge risk of being eliminated from the whole tournament. Having the eye of the tiger, Chaos does this. Yes, that's correct. Chaos had managed to defeat 5 different opponents back to back with each score being 2-0. Which means that he beat every single person that came his way in a best of 3 without ever losing a single game. He first beat Coco, a Foxman who was the 4th seed of the bracket, Array, a Marthman who wasn't a top player but was a respectable Marth nonetheless, defeated Freki, John Ganjin, and even managed to defeat Surf's Up Hail Satan of Puffman who was on the verge of becoming top 10 in Ohio at the time. How is it that a Pichu player who is unranked in Ohio manages to defeat a Puff player using his limited amount of kill setups? See, Pichu in the Jigglypuff matchup has to use moves like down air, nair, and up smash, but these are moves that require Pichu to position himself very articulately since Jigglypuff players are usually in the air, and due to Puff having great air mobility that helps her with her back air spacing, which Pichu doesn't have the necessary tools to close out stocks against an airborne Jigglypuff. Which as you can see from this matchup chart from 2010, Pichu is at a large disadvantage against Jigglypuff. So how is it that a newcomer who just joined the scene in 2014 just suddenly came out of nowhere and started beating all these different players who came from different eras? Nonetheless, after winning the match against Surf's Up, Chaos moves on to face off against Minty a Foxman who had been pretty consistent in the power rankings each year, with being the 7th best in the state, in addition to being seated 2nd in the whole tournament. Now the thing is, Minty and Chaos were arguing for some time on whether to play on Chaos's Wii or on another setup. To some people, this was weird. Why was it that there would be constant arguments on where to play tournament matches? Some people didn't think much of it, but a small number of people began to question it little by little. Once the set began, Chaos wins the game with a clean 2-0, eliminating the Fox player and sending him home. As you can see, Chaos managed to 2-0 everyone that came his way. He had stepped up his game quite a bit and has now made it to the losers finals, a guaranteed third place finish for Chaos. This time, he plays against Joey Krizzle and Ice Climbers main in the losers finals. Ice Climbers is a character that has the ability to wobble the opponent, which is essentially an infinite that was a legal move up until the ban in 2019 across the world. But even with having this tool, it wasn't enough for the Ice's main because Chaos would end up beating Joey 3 to 1. An anonymous melee player would eventually come out, claiming that something was certainly off. During one of the games against Joey Krizzle, the Pichumin was observed F smashing on the right side of Pokemon Stadium during a stage transformation that killed the Icy's main at 18%. As said before, Chaos was seated 10th in the bracket, while Joey, well, he was seated number 3 in the entire tournament. But again, many saw this as an impressive win among the Ohio Smash scene, and rightfully so, because this Pichumin was making waves across the melee scene. Since he beat Joey Krizzle in the losers finals, he now moves on to grand finals against the one and only 4% who is again top 100 in the world. If he wins against 4%, this would be one of the biggest upsets in melee history. This is a best of 5, and so the match begins.
Game 5. Very close set. Who will take the tournament? Will it be 4% or will it be chaos? Chaos loses to 4%, with the score being 3-2. If Chaos had taken the 5th and final game, he would have reset the bracket for one last best of 5 set, but 4% closed it out and took 1st place, winning the entire tournament. This was a tournament where money was involved, people's hard earned cash were on the line, a competition to see who was the best. In the end, 4%, Chaos, and Joey Krizzle got top 3, the players who won a cash prize for their respective placing. Once the tournament had ended, Chaos was very happy to go home with some extra change in his pocket, just by beating everyone and getting second place. Or so, everyone thought he did. After some time, people started becoming even more suspicious in how this Pichu player, only having been in the scene for a couple years, came close to beating one of the best puff mains in the entire world. It was one day when a melee fest was planned for all players to come and enjoy some melee just to chill and have a great time, when one of the players that happened to show up was Chaos himself with his own setup. And once again, there are suspicions surrounding Chaos not being 100% faithful to the rules in tournament play, that even some members in the Ohio scene came up with a plan to steer Chaos away from the room and to take a look at the supposed buried secret. The plan was for some melee players to go to a Sheets convenience store which was located nearby and invite Chaos to join the ride. When the group left, those who stayed where all the melee action was taking place decided to copy Chaos's SD card with a separate one, keeping it secured until it was time to see what was inside. Once everyone came back, everything seemed normal, even to Chaos. The melee menu theme playing in the background and controllers being pressed left and right. When it was time to end the melee fest, Chaos and others left, but not the newly SD card because it was right in the palm of their hands. It was now time to reveal what was hiding in plain sight. And then this video leaked out to the public. Get on the ledge. Just eat it. Up be as fast as you can, spam it. Okay. Holy shit! To the average player, nothing seems to be weird since it's just Pichu using a down tilt to get Falco off stage. But to the experienced individual, the hitbox is 100% modded in that this down tilt is extended to cover more space. As soon as the video came out, players with the newly copied SD card found out that by inputting a specific button combination and picking the blue colored Pichu palette, the character would become the now dubbed Super Pichu. When messing around with Super Pichu's movement and hitboxes, major things were discovered like his down tilt having increased range, invincibility during his up air animation, his weight being changed from 55 to 90, a crazy neutral air hitbox, lagless moves like his forward air, and forward smash being able to kill at such a low percents. It was also discovered that Chaos would ask this question on Smash Sports to the creator of the 20XX hack pack training mod, Achilles, days before the ARG monthly, but this could just be a coincidence. A couple days after the Super Peach discovery, a Reddit post made by Dan Salvato, creator of the 20XX tournament edition, not to be confused with the previous hack pack, made a detailed post surrounding the event and even created a video on the scary ways the tournament melee scene could be faced with hackers in the future. Along with the linked playlist that contained footage of Super Pichu winning games against top players in the region. And to be clear, I did watch the videos, but it all came to a sudden stop when something unfortunate came at my way. The thing is, most of the footage that was linked in the reddit thread used to be viewable. 
and that anyone who was interested in the topic or the story could watch it. But it is now considered lost, and that during my research to make this video, I tried to get in contact with members in the Ohio Melee region who happened to know more about the whole Pichu situation, when one day, it was now gone. But ever since I asked people in the Ohio region about the whole Super Pichu situation from actual witnesses, the playlist was all taken down, never to be seen ever again. Although if you try going back to the Wayback Machine, you are able to watch the only two videos that were archived in the playlist, which is S1 vs Chaos, as well as the one against Sweet. Other than that, as of this recording, the playlist is now considered to be lost media. Aside from that, Super Pichu would be the first ever recorded case of in-game cheating in the whole lifespan of Melee's release. In the end, Chaos was banned and was required to redistribute his tournament winnings and money matches he had won using the Super Pichu. We all hope that something like this never happens one more time, but we'll never know until that day strikes again. And that is it for the video. Oh my god. Dude, I am so exhausted because I literally spent like eight hours today like editing and also uploading this video, right? So like there's a lot of things just going on. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a lot of, you know, it was really fun to make. It was pretty stressful too. It took like about a month or like more than a month just to make this. And yeah, it was, it was really fun. I loved it. Every second of it. Even though with all like the painful stuff that happened, I don't know, I'm not talking about like the things that you know were uh, um, the whole like uh, wayback machine thing. I'm talking about more so just editing this video. It was hard. It was a lot of research and stuff. So, but I mean, it's something. I, I mean, it, it's it's fun. Like it's it's really fun uh, and it's something I love to do. Right. And in terms of uh, this whole peachy situation, I, I do understand that you know like like things were going on and the person's life, and it, it, it's something I never want to bring up in the video. The only thing I want to do for this entire thing was just uh, just document what happened, right? Like, the whole story of what happened, uh, things that led up, uh, and then what happened to the player. And that was basically it. That's all I wanted to do, right? Um, it's You know, I, I didn't want to show any, like, bias or anything like that. Anything like that. Uh, frankly, I'm not the type of person to just, like, you know, uh, put, you know, things, or put something on someone and, you know, that's, this, that's not me. I don't like doing that. I don't, I don't know. It's just not me. I rather just, like, I, I like telling stories, right? And this is a story that I, I, I wanted to tell, right? Because it's... It's just interesting because, again, it's one of the first incidents of in-game cheating for Melee. Like, that has, like, never happened before, right? We've only seen, like, incidents where, let's say, you know, like, Zolgatis, right? Where he stole, like, I think, like, 9K or something like that, right? Or uh, allegedly, or, you know, I, I gotta be careful with, you know, these words. But, yeah, there's a video that I made. But, um, yeah, just incidents that, like, never really happened in in-game. You know, it's crazy because, like, this game is, like, 20 years old and... It was the only time where we saw in-game cheating out of this game being like 20 years old, right? It's crazy. I love Melee, dude. Melee's so good. But, dude, I, <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. I, it just, this, this, is, this is the craziest story I've ever seen. But, yeah, the, the first ever cheating case of Melee? Uh, like, what? In regards to, like, harassment, I, I, don't want, I do not want anyone to, to do that, like, at all, right? No, that's, that's a no for me. No, stop. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, it took I took a long time to make this. I, I put so much blood, sweat, and tears in this. I, I love doing this. It's fun. But yeah, guys, I even have a second channel. You can go and sub to that. I, I just want to make like reactions or like commentary type stuff. So go watch that or go sub to that. And also follow my Twitch because, you know, like, like, okay, not going to lie. Like, oh my God, I'm stuttering. Oh my God, I'm stuttering, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I was going to say that, that um, so a lot of times, right, when my videos are finished, I usually stream like, uh, either the next day or the next week in order to like you know kind of like uh get the stress off you know just chill a little bit and then go and then come back into like editing or making a new video right a high production high production because like you know my videos aren't even like really high production just i don't know <laughs> anyways yeah guys go go do that follow my twitter uh, follow follow my only, follow my only fans no i'm just kidding no but like um yeah i hope you guys have a great day i love you guys Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> subscribe